Resolution, the minimum size at which something can be lithographed, is very important for nanofabrication techniques. We have to transfer a pattern to our sample. The transfer process depends on two players, the lithographer agent and a material which is used to fix the pattern over our sample. Thinking in terms of photography, the lithographer agent would be the light and the material to fix the pattern would be the photosensitive material over the film. Resolution depends directly on the wavelength associated to the lithographer agent. The shorter the wavelength is, the better the resolution is. In our travel towards smaller wavelengths, we meet with a light spectrum, with different wavelengths used by optical lithography. Apart from the light, to perform a lithography, we also have available ions or electrons, which can achieve a wavelength of 0.1 angstroms. We have to say that, despite this short wavelength, lithography depends also on the resist and the lithography system. And at these levels, the main elements responsible for resolution limits are the resist and the apparatus, not the wavelength itself. A 0.1 angstrom of wavelength will not allow to fabricate a nanosystem with 0.1 angstrom of resolution. Using electrons, we perform the so-called E-beam lithography, which needs a resist, in this case, sensitive to electrons. The most popular one is PMMA, polymethyl methacrylate, which is composed by big organic molecules. The effect of the beam of electrons over PMMA is to break the molecules into small pieces, easily dissolved by the developer, so the zones illuminated by the beam disappear when we perform the developing, and that is why the PMMA resist is called positive resist. There are other popular resists, such as HSQ, hydrogen cisylsquioxane, which is a negative resist, or SU8, which is also negative. This last resist is photosensitive as well. The EVL process can be tackled in different ways, mainly depending on how the electrons are projected to the sample, by projection or by scanning. Scanning the beam over the sample can be done shining an area of the sample with a shaped beam or scanning the sample pixel by pixel using a Gaussian beam. Moreover, the way to scan the sample defines other submodules of electron beam lithography, as we can see in the diagram. Here we can see illustrative examples of different scanning modes. Scanning based on Gaussian beam draws the pattern pixel by pixel and it can be done with a raster scan or the vector scan. Both modes have their benefits and drawbacks. For example, the raster scan is slower than the vector scan, but the possibility that the electron beam exceeds the feature limits is higher in the vector scan than in the raster scan. Unlike photography, scanning e-beam lithography is a serial process, becoming an impractical process for mass production. The Gaussian beam process is based on deflecting the beam to scan the sample surface until the whole structure that we want to write is covered, pixel by pixel, keeping the beam at every pixel enough time to change the characteristics of the resist, making it sensitive to the developer. This time is called dwell time. The key parameter for e-beam lithography is the dose, which measures the quantity of charge per unit of area that affects the resist, making it sensitive to the developer. Normally, the dose has a value of around 100 microcoulombs per square centimetre. Dose and the intensity of the incident electron beam allow us to calculate the dwell time of the beam at every pixel, which is around a few microseconds. Despite the small time, writing all the design takes enough time, maybe minutes, to make this technique not useful for mass production. As in the case of photolithography, there are different types of e-beam resists, positive, as PMMA, and negative, as for example the popular HSQ, in which the electron beam transforms the resist into silicon dioxide. In this slide we can see an approximation to fabricate, which is called liftoff. In the liftoff process the resist is exposed and developed before we perform the deposition of the base material, the material which will become a system, by opening windows on the resist and making the substrate accessible. After the deposition of the base material, the resist is dissolved with a convenient solvent, and the part of the base material which is over the resist is removed by this process. What remains is the part of the base material deposited directly over the substrate. In this slide we can see two examples of e-beam lithography over PMMA and HSQ, which allow us to obtain very narrow lines. To summarize, we have to remember that e-beam lithography allows us to achieve nanometric limits of resolution, is a technique that needs electrosensitive resists, 
allows a maskless process, if the approximation of liftoff process is used, is used both in research and industry, but due to the fact that it is a serial process, which makes it a slow process, it is not suitable for mass production. There are some non-ideal effects related with the e-beam process. One of them is the dispersion of the beam itself, due to the collision of the electrons with the atoms of the resist. This dispersion produces a non-desirable increase of the minimum resolution and depends on the energy of the beam. When the dispersion appears, increasing the energy of the beam allows decreasing the dispersion due to the fact that the more energy the electron has, the lower will its capability to interact with the atoms be. We also have to take into account that the lower the interaction of the electron with the atoms is, the lesser the capability of this electron is to affect the resist, and thus, the dose needed to perform the lithography increases with the beam's energy. The non-ideal effects showed in this slide are very important. The stitching phenomenon is a misalignment of different patterns written after stage movement. When we want to write, for example, an area of very long lines, the beam deflection is not capable of allowing long lines, and it is necessary to move the stage. This movement could produce a misalignment of the previous pattern respect to the next one producing the stitching. The proximity effect is due to the fact that the limits of the area affected by the e-beam are not perfectly defined, that is, there is a light Gaussian effect of the beam. If we write different features very close to each other, this light Gaussian beam effect affects the neighbour features, producing an enlargement of their sizes. As we can see in the image showed, the central circles, which are the circles with the highest number of neighbours, have higher diameters than the periphery ones. The last non-ideal effect that is showed here is the non-focusing effect, or the beam with stigmatism. Stigmatism is related with the non-circular shape of the beam, and thus with the non-circular distribution of the beam energy over the resist, producing elliptical-like dots instead of circular dots. This is an example of a commercial EBL system, which belongs to Instituto de Microelectronica de Barcelona. It is important to pay attention to some capabilities of this EBL system. Some of them are shared with other commercial EBL systems. The first one is the interferometric stage. As we saw in the previous slides, writing processes using EBM lithography consist in scanning with the beam the resist surface on which we want to draw our design. The scanning is done using a complex system of magnetic lenses, but also with the movement of the sample stage. The latter is necessary in the case of large designs or in the case of designs distributed over a relative large area. The stage movement has to be very precise due to the fact that we want to write our design with nanometer precision. This precise movement can be achieved efficiently using interferometric control of the movement of the stage. Related to that, it is also important to minimize the drift of the stage, mainly if you are performing very long time e-beam lithography covering a large area or the drift of the beam in respect to a reference position. Fixed beam moving stage is based on not deflecting the e-beam, but moving the stage only. The last capability to take into account is software related, the compensation of the proximity effect. This harmful effect can be corrected via software, recalculating the dwell time of the beam at every pixel during the scanning process of the writing. 